Hi, I am Rasheed Shah, an aspiring triathlete, and I am chairman and CEO of Edelweiss Financial Services Limited. Sometimes you follow passion. Sometimes passion will follow you. Rashesh, what's that one common career advice that you've generally heard people give, but completely disagree with? I think this whole thing about follow your passion. I mean, I do believe that you should be passionate about your work, but sometimes you follow passion. Sometimes uh, a passion will follow you. You will learn to love what you are doing. But I think in career you need to find that holy overlap between three things, which is what you enjoy doing, call it passion if you want, what adds value to the world, and what gives you some payoff in terms of either financial security or you know growth and others. So there has to be individual payoff. There has to be adding value to the world, and there has to be. something that you enjoy uh, which you can call passion you might not have all three you might have two out of three learn to understand these three aspects and that is how you will find your what i call the you know the holy grail in that sense how does rashesh shah identify true leadership potential in young people it is a myth that you identify you actually enable you create enabling conditions you you look for some common attributes but that's a very standard checklist and i would say that from what you identify to what actually becomes a leader there are fair amount of, of, of surprises on both sides people you don't think had the attributes they sometimes show up as some extraordinary leaders and 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 people you had a lot of hope for they will go and falter there is a probabilistic outcome on this what you can best do is obviously identify the right attributes that you want but create enabling conditions because conditions also mold a leader conditions are as important as the attributes rashesh what is something in hindsight that you wish you knew more about leading people i think the first is when you look at people look at their attributes attitude values ethics all of that i used to give more importance to intelligence to their ability to you know get things done but as i've learned i think how they are as human beings how they are as people is equally important rather than how they are as as you know producers of output in that sense and the second people grow but they don't grow in a linear way they grow up and down up and down so somebody will have a stagnant period then they will blossom again and again it goes back to creating enabling conditions for people to grow but don't expect a straight line growth every year people will not grow by x percentage point but suddenly they will have two years of great growth and then two years of struggle with the new roles they have to play so be patient with that be thoughtful about it don't over expect how people will grow but they'll grow in their own terms Rashesh what are two qualities that are most underrated about leadership today one is listening everybody assumes a leaders need to speak but <laughs> leaders need to listen second is curiosity a lot of curiosity about the world about things about markets about people about everything Rashesh what's the most common myth or misconceptions about leadership that you think you should clarify people assume that leaders have the answers ideally leaders should have all the questions and that is where listening comes in because you have the questions and have people around you who can help you come to the answers it is assumed that leaders will, they are no all they are you know this huge um, monolithic kind of people who have all the answers to all the questions and that is i think the most misunderstood one leadership is also about learning to do the opposites there are times a leader needs to speak and there are times the leader needs to listen and i think a leadership journey is about being able to merge the opposite and the wisdom and the judgment that the leadership brings because what leaders bring is not intelligence they bring judgment they be they say in this context this is a right path two behavioral traits that you think good leaders should avoid i think one speak too early in the meetings uh, ideally speak last and let everybody have their say and the other try and drive the agenda in a too focused manner because a lot of the ideas get curbed when you are uh, when you overpower a meeting what do you feel ai and big data is going to do to leaders and leadership i think the softer qualities will become even more important because as the harder things like intelligence and data and all becomes more uh, a hygiene factor they'll become t- t- uh, table stakes like in edelweiss we always say that 
it's going to be i think out analyzing competition is going to be a given but out behaving competition is going to be a skill set that you need to have it's the same thing about iq and eq you i think a leaders don't have to have very high iq but they need to have very high eq so i think the softer aspects of uh, of leadership of the the qualities that any ceo or any cxo needs to have will become even more important rashish what is the biggest difference in leading organizations and people today versus let's say when you started two decades ago i think it was a much easier simple Simpler world, there were it was not as dynamic. I what has happened in the last twenty years? The number of stakeholders have gone up. It was easy twenty years ago where a company CEO could say I work for the shareholders. Now the CEO works for the stakeholders, and the stakeholders includes employees, customers, society at large, government. The stakeholder spectrum has become very complex. It was a much easier one earlier. As long as you just you know keep on hitting your quarterly targets, you are doing okay. As somebody who has faced giant global investment banks, what is your recommendation as to how should entrepreneurs face giant companies? A, I think being small is an advantage. Being small is a huge amount of opportunity that you have because everybody sees what they don't have. So uh, you know, a lot of startups, a lot of young companies are very conscious of what they don't have, the resources they don't have. But they have one thing which is agility. They have one thing which is their ability to think and ability to find opportunities. And I do believe that there are a lot of advantages, especially in a dynamic world that an agile company can have that an incumbent may not have. Rashesh, what would be an advice to somebody getting elevated to a leadership role for the very first time a leadership is a role it's not an identity it can change when you go from a manager to a zonal manager there is a change in role when you go from a head of marketing to ceo there is a change in role if you see it as identity then it's very hard to change so i think having that ability to say it's not an identity but it's a role i have to play and these are the the requirements of the role and the requirement change there are times for a particular organization you need a particular kind of leader there are other times you need different kind of leader in a stable world where you are just growing what you are doing you it requires a, a different kind of leader and we see that at at countries level also that the leaders that the country needs also change over time so i think ability to understand that ability to appreciate that is very important for leaders wanting to advance in their career what's better to do according to rashesh shah become a generalist or a specialist so you always earn your spurs by being a specialist in the early days of an organization at entry level nobody wants a generalist at that stage they want specialist but the ability to have this and that is what it's not a climb that you do it's an evolution as you go higher and higher it becomes more and more generalist and the ceo role is as generalist as it can get the ceo is a chief people officer chief risk officer chief finance officer everything rolled into one and that is where the complexity and the opportunity comes in Rashesh what do you think is India Inc exporting to the world on leadership today Currently we are exporting capability a lot of Indian managers have gone abroad and they are leading large organizations so we are just exporting managerial capability I hope that at some point we also become thought leaders maybe initiatives like what you are doing and others because India does have a lot of capability our our old culture the the learnings we have through the you know through the ages that are there there is a lot that India has to offer to the world three words that describe Rashesh Shah's leadership style empowering trying to look at long term trends and believing in the people Rashesh Adil was to be a five member team when it started out but a few of them backed out on the last day how do you deal with people disappointing you at critical moments The first one was the world will change and the world will keep on throwing curve balls at you and uh, though I think uh, we call it resilience in hindsight at that time it looks like an existential threat but no threat is really existential it's all in your mind how to see a problem as an opportunity and I think you need to learn that very early on we are fortunate or unfortunate that it happened to us very early at the startup stage but we are fortunate because it allowed us to learn that every crisis is an opportunity so in hindi mein there is a quote that I like a lot which is agar मन का हो तो अच्छा अगर मन का ना हो तो और भी अच्छा ऑलवेज हैव अ प्लान बी एंड समटाइम्स प्लान बी इज एक्चुअली बेटर देन प्लान ए रशेश इज अ फाउंडिंग प्रमोटर हाउ डू यू एनकरेज पीपल अराउंड यू टू एक्चुअली डिसएग्री विद यू it's hard it gets harder <laughs> all the time because uh, it's not that people want to parrot you it's just that everybody becomes attuned to a particular way of thinking so there is group think there is a common style and over a period of time everybody adopts 
each other. It's like in any community, everybody adopts to a common style. Everybody adopts to a common approach and a common beliefs, a common set of framework that you have on how to get things done. That is usually the biggest challenge of a leader. I think the two or three ways to do that is there should be some, some churn in the leadership all the time. The, a lot of people say that, you know, if you have the leadership around you, which has been same for the last 15 years, it's a great achievement. I think it also has its own problems because of the group think and the commonality and approach. So we in Edelweiss always say that about 10 to 15 percent of a leadership pool should change all the time and internally and externally some existing leaders should go, some new should come. If the change is a 40-50 percent change, it causes a lot of chaos and upheaval because no organization can handle that. Rashesh, is there any instance where you disagreed with your co-founders or one downs but actually back them to still take their own decision? I think there have been a lot of that, uh, including, you know, how to cluster businesses and all. We always argue on org structure and hiring people and all. The approach that I follow is have a much stronger argument than I have because there will be a difference. But if your argument is much stronger, maybe you are more passionate about your view than it's easy to give in. Most of these decisions are not make or break decisions. So what happens is when it becomes part of your ego that my view is better than yours, then it becomes much harder to accept it. I think our approach is if you feel strongly about it, let's go with it and see how it pans out. Rashish, how do you think your leadership style has evolved over these many decades from a young leader to now leading a large conglomerate? Yeah, I hope I've improved, but my colleagues can answer that better. But yes, am I a little bit more kinder? Am I a little bit more patient? Am I a little bit more thoughtful than I used to be? Absolutely. I think in my own eyes, not a very good leader in my younger days. And what's the most brutal feedback that you've received on your leadership? Who did it come from and what did they tell you? It came from my coach who said, you don't listen enough, which was a shock because I think I was a great listener. I think uh, one of the journeys I still have is how to listen more and how to give more room for people to speak. So it's a constant journey because the time spans are short. People are looking to you for answers and the habit of giving answers very quickly is one of the pitfalls of the leader. Rashesh, how do you deal with criticism? And what creates self-doubt for you? Yeah, I think you just accept it. First, there will be self-doubts. As I said, it's a probabilistic world. There are multiple approaches. Don't doubt your values. So over the last, or whatever, you know, 28 years of Edelweiss, we have never changed our values because we, because we don't doubt our values. So if our values say the things we value, that this is how we'll do things, but your style can change, your approach can change. So as long as you don't have doubts about your values, you are allowed to have self-doubts about everything else. Even criticism, the constant thing to ask is, what do you learn from it? So like, one of the other paradigms I've learned over the years in Edelweiss. We, as a leader, I always look at the past and I always look at the future and it's inevitable. When you look at the past, there will be regrets and mistakes and things which didn't work out, which is right. You, you should introspect on that. But if you only do that, then it is more like rumination. It is more like you are just constantly rethinking that. You have to end that phase by saying, what did I learn? Rashish, what's the one achievement that you're most proud about when you sit back and think through your career? I think one is the culture we have built. And over 28 years, the culture has kept on getting stronger. So when I sit today and I look back and I said, okay, if your market cap came down, if your profits came down, if your businesses were struggling, but if you can keep the culture the way it is and keep on growing that, I would be very happy. And the other is the people, how they've grown, how a lot of people have grown in the organization. A lot of them are still there. A lot of them have quit the organization. No matter, this organization has grown people in a significant way. What would you like to infuse more of in the Edelweiss culture? As I said, uh, if I can get people to listen more, and it will start with me, if I can listen more and most of the leaders can, can listen more, I think it will be a very valuable aspect of our culture. Listening, being more patient, being more thoughtful and being more long-term. I think these are the things we still need to do a lot more of than what we are doing now. I'm sure most people get nervous about meeting Rashesh Shah. What does Rashesh get nervous about? Problem solving meetings where you are really solving a complex problem which has multiple pros and cons and all. The only fear you have is will you get the right answer through getting all the views on the table. So my mom, my biggest concern is are all the views spoken, are all the view, independent views coming out to the forefront and being heard and listened to and then argued around. Rashesh, now that you have many leaders leading multiple parts of your business, 
What forms part of your daily routine as far as Edelweiss is concerned? I think the first is look at MIS and it can change from day to day. Some day it is cash flow, sometimes some days there are other parameters. But you need to look at some data that comes to you overnight. And as a leader, I, I, I always spend at least half an hour, one hour looking at data so that I'm updated on the business. B is speak to people. C is think about what are the new things happening in every business. So if you can, through data, through talking to people, also figure out and take a slightly broader perspective on what is going on in the business. That is very important. What's your recommendation to promoters not to do in a company when they hire professional CEOs? Don't micromanage. I have a lot of clarity. I think one of the reasons people micromanage is they are not clear what they want. So if you're clear of what output you want, what, what deliverables you want, and it can change from time to time. Sometimes you want to grow the top line, sometimes you want to grow the bottom lines. Whatever it is, be clear. Communicate clearly so that there is a clarity around that. Obviously, create incentive system and other enabling conditions and then get the hell out of the way. But get the hell out of the way doesn't mean abdicate. You still get a lot of data. You still have to get a lot of information. And if people are not doing a good job, then change the people. I mean, you will need to be very hard-nosed about it also. But don't compensate by people not working out by micromanaging. Rashesh, can you walk us briefly through your formative years in your career? What did it teach you about leadership and what did you have to learn and unlearn? I underappreciated or under understood the people part of the equation in the leadership journey. I thought it is about answers and ideas and getting common objectives and an execution plan. And I thought a large part of the leader was that part, what I call the hardware part of the leadership, the IQ part of the leadership. I think I I underappreciated the EQ part of the leadership, which is people. Rashesh, what made you choose Venkat as a business partner and what do you rely on him the most? I think more than that, I think he chose me. I, I think we were, we were all young and what I loved about Venkat is uh, fairly blunt, very open, very fearless and along with that, what you see is what you get. So there are no too much reading between the lines in his approach. So all those are the great qualities that are there and over 28 years, those qualities plus many more qualities have added a lot of value. Himanshu, Deepak, Nitin, Vikas, Sibi, what was the common trait that you picked in these people that helped them grow at Edelweiss? I think ultimately it's about aspiration, ambition, ability to learn, ability to grow. And as I said, even, even that is not always linear. Some people have, you know, bouts where they learn and grow at a rapid pace, then they stagnate, their objective changes. So the, the other thing I always say is people always change, their objectives change, their priorities change. As you get older, when you are 30 years old, it's very different. When you are 50 years old, it is different. As a leader, you need to understand that, appreciate that. And that is why I'm saying there is no constant even about people. You need to talk to them to understand where they are. How did you navigate conflict? Ego is one of the biggest pitfalls of a leader. So one of the things we do all the time is get people in the room and say, let's talk. Your approach is A, my approach is B, both are right. Now let's talk, talk, talk to find out what is the answer, A, B or a combo of A, B. And usually that works out. Rashesh, what is the advice that you now seek for as a leader at this stage in your career? And who do you go to for that advice? I speak to quite a few people. I think my board members, my colleagues. We usually also strongly recommend coaching for leaders. I have, I have had three coaches in my life uh, as a leader. And the, and the analogy I use is Sachin Tendulkar and a Virat Kohli and a Roger Federer also need a coach. I'm sure leaders can also make do with coaches. Two people that have influenced you most in your business or leadership journey? One is Vidya, my wife. She has helped me become more kinder, more patient, more long-term, more, more thoughtful. So I think she has had a huge impact. And the other are my kids. I, I, do, I do believe one of the best way to be humble is listen to your wife and your kids because they will make sure that you don't uh, get too carried away. Who in Business India is inspiring you right now? Chandrasekhar at Tata Sons to Uday Kotak. I, I think there have been some fabulous leaders in India. I have tried to learn how they have done things and what they do. If you could pick three people on your dream team to work with at Edelweiss, who would they be and why? I think it will be a stupid kind of a you know wish list, but <laughs> I mean I respect Charlie Munger, I would say Bill Gates, Jamie Diamond. What's the end goal for Rashesh Shah? What inspires him to be at work every day? 
again it comes down to the journey is always more important than the destination and are you enjoying the journey not that you are enjoying every minute of it there there are times you will be upset and things will not be working out but on the whole when you look at it holistically are you enjoying it are you passionate are you working with people that you enjoy i think for me one of the things that counts the most is am i around people that i enjoy being around with rashesh what's the best piece of advice that you received from mr narayan murthy his advice was always make sure you become profitable rashesh your quick fire with kunba starts now one thing you've learned never to do as a leader take shortcuts one thing you've learned leaders always must do listen one thing you wish people knew more about rashesh the fun side one personality trait that gets in your way the most taking things too seriously one thing in your job that you want to get better at being patient first thing you do in the morning the last thing you do at night thank the almighty your favorite workday time waster i enjoy reading very low brow books <laughs> when in doubt rashesh shah dash ask questions and consults your most prized possession is my ability to swim money for you 20 years ago meant financial security money for you today means ability to, to invest in others what's been on your personal to do list for the longest time doing a, a, a vipassana a meditation course <laughs> the soundtrack to your life will be i will survive a cheesy song that you're often caught humming in the car chumka gira re bareli ke bazaar mein swimming lessons with michael phelps or investing lessons with warren buffet investing lessons with warren buffet your secret daydream ability to sing one new business idea that's inspiring you right now i think this entire thing about moving from from assets to ideas and from hardware to software i think all over the world people are becoming asset light so i would say asset light approach whether is airbnb whether is uber i think that's a phenomenal three most common apps used by rashesh whatsapp obviously financial times bloomberg your favorite movie or show when we say the word leadership uh, the movie invictus what does the rashesh shah family discuss or disagree with most at the dinner table we discuss almost everything in the world about how the world is panning out and we disagree between should human beings evolve or there should be a, a revolution what would venkat vidya neel and avanti all agree with about you that i need to smile more of life after adel wise will look like more reading more running more swimming <laughs> after rashesh shah adel wise will look like more institutionalized more process oriented more planning oriented rashesh if you had a gigantic billboard out there and could type a message to millions what would it be and why stay the course with that rashesh thank you very much for this chat with kunba it's been an absolute privilege to have this chat with you so i personally would like to see all the other interviews you have with all the other leaders and learn from that India does need a lot more conversation about leaders a lot more narrative and exchange of ideas about leadership there is not lot of content that is available where we can grapple and discuss and learn from this i think it's a platform whose time has come if your shirt is crumpled people will think your thoughts also crumpled an aspiring triathlete We all set. <laughs>